Hey guys, this is Rachel, aka Miss Wow. Welcome to the Wow Tech Club, where our club members, big names from tech industries, give out their first hand insights. Welcome to Web 3.0 Pioneering Days, where many criticize Metaverse for just being a concept that lacks hardware, infrastructure, and mature tech support. Others argue that that's why it's a good business with huge potential, like Las Vegas in 1900. Today, we're happy to welcome Esteban Odano, the co-founder and CSO of Decentraland from Argentina. After six years, Decentraland's valuation now talks 6.5 billion US dollars, and it's just one example of how hot the metaverse is right now. While venture capital is craving access to the industry, many wonder whether it's our future or just another mirage. Here are his thoughts, so please enjoy today's episode. Hello, Esteban. Welcome to the show. Is it your first interview with the Chinese media? Yes, definitely. The metaverse is, of course, a hot topic that everybody's talking about. But it seems like different people have different definitions for the metaverse. Hot games like Second Life and Fortnite are seen as some kind of versions of the metaverse. But I think it's a bit confusing. Like, can we see that any large online game like World of Warcraft is metaverse? If not, what are the barriers between them? And as a builder of Decentraland, what is your definition? Like, even if you are in the real, real world, uh, your head, uh, the information that happens in your head could be considered virtual because it's a, it's a lot of information that happens through your nervous system. And when you're running or when you're like talking with somebody, um, there are very few atoms that are being moved and a lot more electrons and more information that is flowing. So how do you define that virtuality and that reality? So mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a, a more like, it's a gradient that, that it's not a binary thing that, oh, now I'm in the virtual world and now now I'm in the real world. Uh, you, you are in both worlds at the same time. It's a new medium to understand or, or consciousness to create these virtual worlds. So even when that with uh, reality, how to get information from the real world, uh, interchange it with information from virtual re reality, and then uh, combine those two to create a better understanding of our virtual worlds and from the real world. It's what I understand this next stage of the internet as that better understanding of the data flows, the information flows, and how to create better visualizations of that information and how to make use of all of that so that computers become uh, more more personal or more useful for our societies. So how should we define the first year of the metaverse era? Is it when we value digital life more than our material life, the so-called physical flipping, or when everybody is extremely online? So I think that in, in general, uh, those two things will coexist. We are more and more spending time in front of those com the computer, in front of the screens, with the mobile phones. And I think that that flipping between the real world or like this virtual world um, will not necessarily happen without the metaverse or the virtual world caring for the real world is something that will will have to be there in the metaverse as well because at, at the end of the day i think that the the metaverse is a tool to improve our real life another thing is hardware the tech bottlenecks such as high cost and dizziness from VR glasses has slowed the metaverse promotion. But another argument say that the metaverse can be independent of hardware. So what is your take? Do you think the metaverse requires immersion? I think it's a tool that will be helpful. If you try it around the virtual reality headsets and, and things like that, I think that right now uh, I would err on the side of uh, judging that uh, we need a better understanding of how to create better user interfaces in virtual reality and uh, also for augmented reality. And so, so how do we change information? I think that it will be really great if we can find better ways to program with visual interfaces in virtual reality. I think that will unlock 
a, a next stage of understanding how we can create better user interfaces and after and that can come together with better hardware for immersion i think that haptic gloves are something that we definitely need to make to make sure that our hands can create touch code and uh, manipulate uh, the data flows and the data streams in the way that the users want. So I am really looking forward for that uh, improvement from happening. And uh, in general, I think that immersion uh, would be similar to maybe meditating a little, but I think that we better, we first need to change the way we think about the software. Decentraland has a very high valuation at around 6.5 billion US dollars. Some are said it's undervalued, like Las Vegas in 1900, full of potential future businesses. But others think that the value depends on Facebook's name change. I mean, if we look at the data, after Facebook changed its name to Meta, the value of Decentraland increased by 330%. So what do you think supports such high valuation or does it just reflect the attention that Mark Zuckerberg put on Metaverse? Cool. Yes, um, so I think that one of the things that make the central land is really decentralized and there is no single company behind it. Um, I think that should have a multiplying effect on how, in, uh, how valuable it is. Yeah, I can see the light sparkling in your eyes when you recall that experience. It must have been a mind-blowing adventure back then. So let's talk more about the Voltaire House. What impressed me the most is the vibe. You know, lovers and cryptos and founders of Decentraland, you were talking philosophy, history, and coding. During lunch, you were, you know, working, eating together. So could you please recall the time back in those days and how it was organized and how does it help to develop a startup company? So how do philosophy and human civilization discussions inspire your coding work and build a metaverse? So Mostly information is, is uh, flowing a lot faster nowadays than it used to flow before. Um, I once read that a, a farmer 1000 years ago received as much information as all the information that you receive when you open up your phone for a couple of minutes and you browse the web and the internet. So that is a lot of information that you that is at your fingertips. Programming for me is more about being able to understand and curate those that data flows, uh, the, the, the data flowing into your device. So I think it's also, it, sh it should be more of a social activity because right now the mobile phone is very individualistic, right? And the experience is very, very personal. I think that mm -hmm. it should be like more connected, more of a social experience about thinking. Compared with Web 2.0, what are the disadvantages of the mobile internet that need to be solved and involved? Okay, so regarding yeah. Web 2 and Web 3, I think that in general, there's a lot of promise uh, about this Web 3 change in data operation, data ownership and data flows. I think that the most important aspect would be for the the intermediation of the creators of content and the and the users, their audiences. Mm -hmm. I think that in Web3 we one of the most important aspects of really getting that change, uh, uh, getting that change right, is mm -hmm. if we can reconnect the creators with their audiences. So whenever you create a show and you publish it on Netflix and you want to hear from the users uh, what did they like the most about the show and things like that, um, you can uh, go out there and ask them uh, directly without having to ask permission for, for, from the platform. Uh, for the internet to evolve in general, I think that that is something that we need to retake. I think uh, the next evolution of the internet is probably something that is more humane, something that is more 
uh, natural and uh, better aligned with the future of our societies, uh, of a good future for our societies. And you can only do that, uh, like at some point you are going to only be able to do that if you go against certain aspects of corporations. Esteban, I'm really curious about your latest thinking and observations about Metaverse. So what is next up? What is the future of Metaverse? Have you ever considered frontier technologies such as BCI, I mean, brain computer interface technologies or other tech measures to bring the Metaverse to a new level? Brain computer interfaces uh, are definitely something very uh, very interesting. I think that we will achieve a level of symbiotic relationship with computers through VCIs. So I I imagine the brain computer interfaces to be something like like that, like a lot of bandwidth and a lot of information coming directly to your brain, uh, which is uh, a lot, lot faster than when you use your mobile phone or when you use your computer. When Many people, including Elon Musk, have expressed concerns about Metaverse and how it creates various kinds of fun at a pretty low cost, you know, which may reduce people's desire to explore the real world and bring about population risk and technological stagnation. So what do you think about the future of mankind? Is it going to be the sea of stars, I mean, go to the Mars, or we go dive really deep into the Metaverse? I think it's, a, it's both the real world and the virtual world. I think that in some sense we're trying to explore ourselves and to explore uh, the the human experience and how how does that if it does make any sense at all. I am currently trying to like help as many people as possible to have like uh, better better lives, and uh, I think that's just like the way that I like to enjoy life. Okay, Esteban, I think that is all of my questions. Thank you for your time. And thank you so much for having me. All the questions and all the interview was really, really amazing. Esteban said that we can have best of both worlds. And from a micro perspective, the metaverse can combine with the real economy and boost the digitization of all industries. The integration with metaverse and the real world is something that we can all look forward to. Okay, so this is Rachel from the Wild Tech Club. I'll see you next time. Bye.